Ian Castleberry with us. Hope you had a good weekend, Ian, and hope you're having a good Monday. Yeah, on both fronts. Having a had a good weekend and Monday's going pretty well. Yeah. Excellent, man. I, I know, you know, it can be really wonky. I, I I keep up with friends, you know, as we're going through the whole COVID thing. And you know, one one pattern I'm finding, and I'm guilty of this too, it happens to me is man, we just hit like a patch where it's just like we're in some kind of funk. And you know, you just it takes days sometimes to like break out of it. You know what I mean? And um yeah, so yeah. You know, if you're out there in the audience and you're feeling like you're in a funk, you ain't alone during all of this for sure. We're, we we got your back on that, and we got a. Do we have the back for the, the Lions on this one, Ian? I I got to tell you, a, a nice job uh, by the new general manager of the Lions. We'll get your thoughts on that here in just a moment. Uh, Ian's appearance talking Major League <laughs> Baseball in the Stafford trade, uh, presented by our friends at Happy Hill Restaurant. Um, all right, so before we get into the old series uh, baseball headline discussions here, Ian, I got to get the take in your take on your lions uh dealing stafford to the rams and, and again not a bad first uh, deal for your team's new gm who came from the rams and but sadly it's kind of up the ante on the deshaun watson sweepstakes which is not good news necessarily for panthers fans but how did you like this deal at first i did not like it because getting jared goff and his massive contract scared me but uh, upon studying the contract a little more The Lions can get out of it without paying any guaranteed money after two years. So really, it's just it's a it's a really tough salary cap crunch for 2021, 2022. Not so bad, but I mean they need a quarterback, so they have one for at least two years. I think it also takes the pressure off of the Lions to possibly draft a quarterback this year, especially with the number seven overall pick. If if it turns out you know they don't like. Justin Fields or Trey Lance, whoever might drop to them in that spot. But they got two first round picks and that that is the prize. That is great. I wish one of them was for this year. The Rams don't have a first round draft pick this year because they traded it in the Jalen Ramsey deal. The Rams don't like first round draft picks apparently. They're no. going to go I think 7 8 years without having a first round pick, but they get the, the two first round picks. They have a quarterback for at least 2 years, maybe more. If you read Peter King's uh, NBC Sports column, the Lions are high on on Jared Goff as a quarterback, which shouldn't be a surprise. Brad Holmes, the Lions new general manager, came right. from the Rams and had a lot to do with scouting Jared Goff in the process of before the Rams made him the number one overall pick. But it also kind of warms my Lions fan heart a little bit that a star player left the Lions and it wasn't a really tense, bad situation like it was with Barry Sanders and and Calvin Johnson. Uh, You know, they they did uh, Stafford a solid here. The Rams are the team he wanted to go to, so they traded him there. There are reports that maybe the Washington football team had a better offer, also offering two first-round picks. But the Lions really wanted a quarterback in a deal, uh, and maybe that's what ultimately got that done. You, you, know, you could simplify it and say, well, okay, they got one first-round pick for trading Stafford, and then they got one first-round pick for taking Jared Goff and his contract. Um, <laughs> I, I think that's that's a pretty good deal. And like you said, really, uh, I think a, a very solid deal, maybe even a great deal for the Lions' new general manager, Brad Holmes. Yeah, man. Of course, again, driving up the uh, Deshaun Watson uh, price uh, as well. That was, a, I got to admit, I'm being selfish with the Panthers going after Deshaun Watson. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. Sure. That's not going to help things. All right, let's 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 get to baseball. We got some uh, really good topics to get to, including just chatting with Chris Smith, you know, who had uh, Nolan Arenado, the uh, Asheville Tourists, before, of course, uh, he made his way to the Colorado Rockies. But the Cardinals looked, uh, they're going to be acquiring Nolan Arenado from the Rockies. And it looks like the cards are giving up some prospects while picking up, uh, you know, a huge salary. Although Colorado is going to pay some of Nolan's uh, salary, but they get, you know, the be- one of the best players in baseball. So, Ian, I love this deal for Arenado. Now, he's going to thrive and I think perhaps even raise his game like McGuire did before him when he went to St. Louis. Where does this move put the Cardinals in a very competitive National League Central division? Yeah, I think, well, first of all, the Cardinals seem to be the only NL Central team that is interested in winning this season. <laughs> Let's go. You know, the Cubs are yeah. in kind of a, <laughs> the Cubs are in kind of a, a tear down there. You know, the Cincinnati Reds apparently decided that their uh, rebuild project or their youth movement uh, wasn't going according to plan. The Pirates are just tearing it down to the studs. The Brewers aren't doing well. So the Cardinals were in a good position anyway. 
it is comparable, I think, to when in the past they've gotten players like Mark McGuire, Jim Edmonds, Jason Hayward. Jason Hayward didn't stay, but the, the thought was, you know, that these players, they come, they, they, they learn the St. Louis organization, how they do things, the great fan base that they have there, and, you know, they decide they want to stay there. Nolan Arenado is already uh, under contract, though he can opt out of it. When he can opt out of it is something I believe that is still being negotiated. Under the terms of the original deal, he could opt out after the 2021 season. So if that's the case, you know, then the Cardinals have basically one year to, to kind of get Nolan Arenado to fall in love with St. Louis uh, and playing for the Cardinals. But they get one of the best defensive third basemen in baseball. He should hit number three, number four in the lineup. You know, him and Paul Goldschmidt, that, that is an excellent middle of the order. They, they can use other players now. They can move guys like Matt Carpenter, maybe kind of make him a super utility guy, play him, you know, at first or second or third, uh, wherever he needs to, to play. And I think Arenado... You, you know, you never know, but I think he's going to be energized by playing for a contender. I think right. constantly playing for a losing team in Colorado and not really being sure of what the plan was. You know, are they trying to contend? Or are they trying to rebuild? I think it, it kind of weighed on Arenado, and he got sick of the whole routine there. We had some fun over lunch. Uh, me and a friend, we were doing a Google image search of Nolan Arenado, looking for something we could use for an article, and. He looks sad in all these pictures. He's not smiling in any of them. Now, maybe he's just a really <laughs> intense guy on the field, but you could also say, geez, he looks like a guy who is not enjoying playing for the Colorado Rockies. And uh, that should presumably change playing for the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah, I think this is a great move for, for St. Louis and, and for, you know, for, for Arenado as well, because that is such a great baseball town. No doubt about that. And it just does. I mean, the players just tend to feel the love from the community. It's really... I mean, they don't have the Rams there anymore. There's no NBA team there anymore. It's the Blues and the Cardinals. And most years, it, it, it's a Cardinals town for sure. All right, uh, Ian Castleberry playing with the wise guys on the D.C. Creaseman Jewelers Wise Lines. And, of course, it is our Major League Baseball update for this Monday presented by our friends at Happy Hill Restaurant, Patton Avenue, across from Gross Funeral Home. Uh, the Phillies re-signed shortstop Adito Gregorius to a two-year $28 million deal. I think he came to the team last year from the Yankees. That's a lot of money, but is it money well spent in your opinion there, Ian? I think it is. $28 million does seem like a lot, but if you look at what some of the other free agent shortstops got, uh, Marcus Simeon signed for $18 million. Andrelton Simmons signed with the Twins for less, but Simmons isn't as good a hitter as Gregorius or Simeon. So the Phillies needed a shortstop. They really didn't have anybody else to play that position. With Dave Dombrowski uh, taking over as, as team president, Joe Girardi hired the year before as manager. I think there is some thought that they can contend in what is going to be a very tough National League East. You know, we joked about the, the Cardinals being the only team that looks like they're trying to win in the NL Central. Every team in the NL East, uh, apparently, is trying to win. So to stay competitive, they needed a shortstop. Uh, Gregorius is one of the best in baseball. Maybe he's a notch below, you know, if you put guys like Trevor Story and Francisco Lindor and Javier Baez in that top tier. Gregorius may be uh, in that second tier, but still very good. You know, he can hit, he hit 10 home runs in a shortened season. Last year, he, he could probably, you know, he, he can consistently hit 20 to 25 home runs, especially in a ballpark like Citizens Bank Ballpark in Philadelphia. Not the, the defensive shortstop that he used to be, but uh, he's still good. And I think the thought is with players like him, if, you know, maybe he's not the most stellar defender, he can make up for it with his bat. Yeah, you know, you're right. I mean, Philadelphia, I was wondering that too. I'm like, all right, the Phillies now making a move. The Braves, you know, obviously the defending division champions, you know, the Mets are making some moves. They have a new own, you know, new ownership. So yeah, no one's sitting still in, in the uh, National League East for sure. Uh, Ian, any other uh, signings of note as spring training is just around the corner? We, we think more on that in a moment. It seems to have frozen again. I mean, we, we had this big, maybe now that this Nolan Arenado deal has been done, uh, that will kind of, uh, loosen up the market a little bit and, and, and George Springer signing with the Blue Jays last week. But Trevor Bauer, the top free agent pitcher, is still out there. There are still names like Justin Turner hasn't signed with anyone. Marcelo Zuna, is he going to return to the Braves or will he sign elsewhere? One guy I really like, I wish my Tigers would sign him, Jackie Bradley Jr. I know that's not going to happen, <laughs> but he's still out there. Yasiel Puig, where is he going to end up uh, after uh, striking out with the Braves? 
last season. And there's still there's some good pitchers out there too. Chris Archer, Jake Arrieta, Mike Fultonevich. Uh, so still still some pretty big names that have not signed yet, uh, and that might be a reason for. Uh, one of the stories that we're uh, talking about, like when exactly spring training might begin. Speaking of, there, there seems to be um, a little back and forth between the owners and the players on the start of spring training. Ian, just to refresh, when is spring training slated to begin? I know pitchers and catchers will report first, but is it going to be on schedule, do you think? It is set to be uh, on schedule. You know, pitchers and catchers reporting uh, in mid February. If everything goes according to plan, you know, all the players want this to be a normal season. Go go through a full spring training, play a 162 game season. The owners are pushing back on that a little bit. They want uh, want to play a 154 game season. Maybe thinking that uh, the extra week maybe will help uh, with, with preparations for COVID playing uh, in home ballparks. I mean, it, it does seem silly that we're basically talking about a week here in terms of how far back to push spring training and how many games to cut off the season. Uh, and the owners reportedly still say they will pay the players for 162 games, even if they only play 154. You remember that was the big bugaboo yeah. last year uh, during the COVID no- negotiations is that, you know, the players wanted to play as many games as possible so they could get paid the most. The owners wanted to play as few games as possible so they had they could pay the players less. So this, this one seems a little bit silly to me. I, it almost seems like the players and the owners in baseball will just argue over anything if you give them uh, the opportunity. But given that this is such a almost a trivial matter it seems as if the pl- spring training and the 2021 major league baseball season will start on time man uh, that would be nice that would be a little bit of normalcy you know moving forward and again you know whether you know when fans will be allowed in the stands uh remains to be seen you know we still have a long way to go with this uh with the virus obviously uh but hopefully you know maybe by by late summer um, you know, more fans will be able to be allowed into the games. So we'll just, just have to wait and see for sure. As Ian Castleberry with the Wise Guys. Ian, always appreciate you. Thanks, Pat. Always thank you, Ian, very much. That's Ian Castleberry, who, by the way, wrote for Yahoo Sports, Bleacher Report, SI.com, covering the Dodgers just uh, last summer. And, uh, of course, does a number of uh, radio hits around the country, including us here uh, in his hometown of Asheville. Appreciate Ian playing with us and follow Ian's work currently uh, offlanouncing.com and also, too, at thecomeback.com. You can like both on Facebook.